welcome everyone. Welcome to a beginner's guide to smoking and vaping cannabis flower. My name is Erica Greif. I'm your Elementa representative here this afternoon. And with me is the CEO of Astro Farms. Her name is Julia Jacobson, and we're excited to have her today. She, uh, I'm going to let her, of course, introduce herself, um, but we are super excited to um, move through all how, uh, how Astro Farms came to be, um, the superiority of sun-grown cannabis, uh, and Julia is going to take us through a demonstration of um, uh, joint rolling and vaping, and, and we're going to work out how to do each the best way, what are the SOPs of, best, of, of both practices. So thank you, Julia. Thank you for having us. Go ahead and introduce yourself if you don't mind. Thank you. I really appreciate you having me on. And hi to everybody who's joining us today. Really appreciate it. I am Julia Jacobson, CEO and co-founder of Aster Farms. Aster Farms is a sustainable cannabis brand located in California. We actually grow our own flower and we currently sell clean green certified, which is the equivalent of organic flower in both jars and various pre-roll forms. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I'm going to talk to you about today is how to consume flower in both vapes and in pre-rolls. Fantastic. Thank you for that. I hear that um, you have a pretty fantastic uh, Aster Farms beginnings as well as history um, so far. Do you want to start where, where it feels good and just give us a little bit of background? Absolutely. Um, so I actually started my career as a buyer for Bloomingdale's. So I was in the retail world, getting some great supply chain economics uh, skills in my tool set. I was there for about four years and ultimately left to start my first startup. It was a retail tech startup that I ran for about five and a half years. We went through the tech stars. Oh, I have a little dog crawling by. I love it. That's great. <laughs> he'll, he'll make some appearances, I'm sure. Fantastic. Uh, so went through the Techstars Accelerator program, which was an unbelievable boot camp and becoming a CEO. And my company was ultimately acquired by XO Group, which is the company that owns and operates The Knot and The Bump, um, which many people might be familiar with. So I worked there for a little while, about a year. And at the end of that, I was just incredibly burnt out. I did not want to have anything else to do with the tech startup world. I didn't want to do anything digital online. I just wanted out. And I had this really deep desire to literally put my hands in the dirt. Mm. I didn't know what that meant. I lived in Manhattan. Oh, <laughs> city, okay. City girl growing up. So, just, and I didn't know how to translate my biz dev career into agriculture. Um, but simultaneously, I was also developing chronic migraines. I had always had some migraines, but it's hereditary. And in my later 20s, it really started to take on a new level of um, real just dysfunction and deterioration of my life. Um, I was having, for one period of time, I had a single migraine for eight months straight, um, pain every single second of every day. I was hospitalized three times during those eight months. I was on a cocktail of pharmaceutical medications that are really just trials. Just try this one, try that one, try this combination. Um, and I was also reaching for pretty much anything that could help. Somebody suggested lidocaine shots in my forehead. I went and got them. Um, I've had acupuncture and chiropractic work in my life, and I went and tried that. Um, and really, everything was, it was just really debilitating my life. I wasn't able to work. I wasn't able to have fun. Um, and one of the times that I ended up in the ER, the ER doctor said to me, have you ever, I can't prescribe it to you, but have you ever tried cannabis for your migraines? Wow. And I had been a recreational user for some time, but I had never thought of it in that way before. Okay. And so in fact, when I have a migraine, the last thing I think to do is why don't I roll, spend some time rolling up a joint <laughs> and spend 30 seconds or a minute smoking it. You know, that's the last, you don't want to do anything when you have a migraine. You want to be under a pillow in a dark room. And so I listened to this doctor and I gave it a try and it was unbelievably helpful. Um, and I'll, I can talk in a second about all the different ways that I use cannabis and CBD for my migraines and other cannabinoids. Um, but it was the moment that really changed changed cannabis for me in my life when it went from just part of my social life to part of my wellness and the ability for me to actually live my life. 
So today I'm completely off of all my pharmaceutical meds for my chronic migraines. Um, I have not been in the hospital in over three years and my life is back to normal. So um, it cannabis really was a game changer for my own life. And I started seeing this happening in other people's lives as well. And so this kind of desire to stick my hands in some dirt and do something that was a little bit closer to the earth, literally, and more grounding. And then this also this moment where cannabis just changed my life. Um, that was kind of when I decided, I think I need to be part of this industry. So the way that we actually started Aster Farms, and I started the company with my husband, um, Sam, his grandparents actually moved to Mendocino in the 60s, and his family has been growing off-the-grid, sustainable, organic cannabis since then. Um, his father was actually the first, his grandfather, excuse me, was the first person to go to prison for c cultivating cannabis in Mendocino, um, and legend has it, we have not fully verified this yet, his family brought indica seeds to California. Oh, oh hey. So hey. Still to be verified. We're having all the interviews with the various aunts and uncles and the other people on Signal Ridge and Mendocino, but um, it's been an exciting history for us to kind of dig into and, and learn more about. So we had this great example of off, off the grid sustainability, organic inputs, and um, an example of how what great cannabis that can actually produce. Um, in mine and Sam's lives, we're conscious consumers. We care about what we're putting into our body, what we're putting on our body. We care about the companies that we're spending our money on. And at the time, back in 2016, we didn't really see a brand in the market in terms of flour that had all that transparency, that had transparency about what, what fertilizers and nutrients and pesticides perhaps were being used on the product, um, transparency about what kind of company was this, how do they treat their employees, um, and we didn't see a company that kind of had that um, less screaming in your face marijuana. Um, you know, a lot of packaging in the past was 420, Kush, this, marijuana leaves everywhere. And so, tacky. Just yeah, tacky. <laughs> there's a place for it. There's definitely a place sure. for it. I will say sure. I have bought those pre rolls before myself. Um, sure. But so we decided to kind of take a, a a lesson from this family agricultural history and create a brand that we grew our own flour. We could tell you exactly what hands harvested it. We tell you exactly what ingredients went into our nutrients and our fertilizers. Um, so in 2016, we started Aster Farms. Fantastic. Thank you for taking us through that. I love a good backstory. That's yeah. magnificent. And I love that it has been in your husband's family for so long and that it gave you the opportunity to do what it is that, in my words, your soul really needed, your body really needed. It's just so beautiful. I love to see that alignment come together for women entrepreneurs. It's just beautiful. And congratulations on your journey. Congratulations on your health. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Yes, wonderful. That's been a huge win for my life. Yeah, I feel like it it there is this really special time when we recognize that recreational use and 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 you know bridge the gap to medical use in our own minds and perception. And once you have the opportunity to do that, especially with all the new research and information that we have now, there's just such a um, you know a richness that it can offer your life. Where you know a lot of people have had the opportunity to get off multiple different uh, pharm pharmaceuticals from opioids and you know and you know antidepressants or whatever it is, um, migraine medicine. Um, so that it has supported them or at least reduce it in some way. I myself was able to get off of alcohol. I mean, it was just magnificent. So um, I feel like we all can really relate to that story in one way or another where we go, oh my God, this has always been with me. I just needed to change my perception and change my orientation to, you know, really who I am and what I'm about and what I use with honor and dignity. It's just beautiful. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. And, you know, I think, you know, what you touched on there is really overcoming the stigma. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, the difference between recreational and medicinal use is accepting with myself yeah. that using it for wellness reasons in the right ways is truly medicine. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the challenging things with the way that can legal cannabis has rolled out is that the medicinal programs, the actual medical programs have not been robust enough. 
um, at least in California, when recreational came online, you saw a lot of the knowledge in the actual dispensaries kind of disappear. A lot of the guidance that was happening. I really think there's a big hole in the market for more actual guidance around the medical use. And I think because we look at medical as medical and medicinal as something else, I think we all still have to overcome this cannabis stigma and accept that wellness is medicinal, you know, that well, that medicinal is medical. And even if we don't have that ER doctor whispering in our ear, telling us the exact dose to take, telling us the exact strain to take, um, that it still is wellness if we are using it for medicinal purposes. So. I think Absolutely. That. And, uh, you know, it is companies like Astro Farms that, you know, uphold the dignity, uphold the, I love how you call it the clean green certified, uphold the sun grown and the family legacy that this is medicine. And then also companies like Elementa that are offering information like this and, and, and asking um, women like you to come and share not only your backstory, but also, uh, and your personal story, but what you're offering now is just, you know, it's, it's uh, tangible, it's touchable, it's approachable. Uh, it feels a hell of a lot safer than calling Ray Ray, as, as Wanda James says, calling Ray Ray. Um, it just feels like um, it can be medicine because it's held in a way that it needs to be held with, with a, once again, that honor and that dignity. So fantastic. Wonderful. So um, is there any other pieces that you wanted to hit upon um, about Astro Farms uh, before we move forward to talk about the, uh, you know, smoking and vaping? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I would say that in, two things quickly. Just one is the way that we grow. Um, oh, please, all, yeah. outdoor, all outdoor cannabis is not created equal. And it's definitely important to ask questions. Just because cannabis is grown outdoors doesn't mean that they're not using pesticides. And the good news is if you're buying on the legal market in California, everything has to go through pesticide testing. But there's still a small amount that's allowed, the same way that a small amount is allowed in organic tomatoes or any kind of agriculture cultural prop. Um, so at Astor Farms, you know, we use, we make sure that we're testing zero parts per billion of any pesticide whatsoever. Um, and we also grow in ground in live soil, which gives an incredible ecosystem of bugs and a microbiome and really builds a more complex cannabinoid profile. And so I think one of the things that I would say to people learning the differences between outdoor and indoor, one thing that you're going to see on the shelves in terms of indoor versus outdoor is a lot more, you're going to see on indoor a lot more trichomes. Okay. But that doesn't, just because outdoor cannabis might not look as crystally as indoor cannabis, mm -hmm. it doesn't have the visual shelf appeal, it doesn't mean that the actual cannabinoid profile and the actual effects that you're going to get are not as good or even better because they have that full spectrum sunlight that's giving them all of the range of medicinal effects. The cannabinoid profile has time to really build and all the nutrients to build in a complex way. So um, definitely do not shop based on potency or, um, you know, what, what something looks like it's covered in crystals, um, dig a little deeper, ask questions, find out how it's grown and where it's grown. Good to know. Yeah. It, you know, it reminds me of the whole, um, uh, fresh caught salmon versus farm raised salmon. I mean, there truly is a difference, you know, salmon in the wild, let's hope their environment is all clean and beautiful. They they feast from a variety of different animals. They are part of the um, the system, and so their microbiome is totally different. So their omega fatty acids are different, or maybe even more potent. Um, and so you get a full spectrum fish, if you will. And so you know you lose that when you farm raise raise something. I just kind of equate that, you know, um, to uh, indoor and outdoor. There's something beautiful and magical and natural around raising anything outside. And I, I fully can appreciate um, having cannabis grown in fresh sunlight and fresh air with the bees. And, um, you know, it's just beautiful to me. I wanted to uh, bring up something on your website that I thought, I mean, there are so many good things on your website that I thought were fantastic, which is astrofarms.com. Is that accurate? 
Yeah, great. Um, I love how, and I've seen this done um, by different companies trying to make their um, different products categorized in a way that makes them, you know, more usable. And I really love how you use sunrise, radiant, sunset, moonlight, and my personal favorite, outer space. I thought that that was really, really smart and cute and wonderful. Where did that come from? Thank you. So we really wanted to create, again, we wanted the Aster Farms to really relate back to nature, which is why in our logo and our branding, we're pulling colorways from the mountains, from the trees, right where we are in Lake County. Um, we pull our mountainscape from Lake County. And so we wanted to hearken back to nature in everything that we did. We also don't necessarily agree with some of the classifications that are being made by other brands. Okay. Um, I can give you a sativa that we might call radiant because it is uplifting, energetic. I'm not going to tell you it's going to make you creative, though. I don't know. Maybe it'll make you creative. Maybe it'll make you a little hyper. Maybe it'll make you just want to go for a walk. I don't know. But what I do feel comfortable advising you on as a brand and as a cultivator is the general time of day that one might want to consume this. I don't know what you're going to do during the middle of the day when you smoke a radiant joint, but I'm just going to let you know that this is kind of a radiant effect and the time of day you might want to consume it is when the sun is radiant versus a moonlight or an outer space. So, okay. um, we both wanted to hearken back to nature and also kind of break break this trend that we saw happening where too many promises were being made. Right. Yeah, it feels um, incredibly honest and, you know, um, just um, giving the consumer uh, another way to coordinate or, you know, uh, maneuver through the different products. I think that that was really smart and uh, congratulations on that. I, I've never seen that before. It was really good stuff. Um, I wanted to pause for just a moment. I wanted to let everyone know that we have a giveaway um, and uh, it is a giveaway um, from Gold Leaf Cannabis Journal. It is a journal that um, is created with scientific cannabis information so that you can um, journal your cannabis journey to figure out what time of day you are most creative or not, or nighttime, just to figure out, um, to keep track of the products that you have tried, all of the different specifics, um, and kind of what their effects were so that you can slowly and surely hone it in and make your cannabis uh, medicine deeply, deeply deeply personal and uh, bespoke, bespoke medicine just for you. So thank you to Gold Leaf. And when we are done, um, we will pull a winner. I'm excited about it. Yeah. We're huge Gold Leaf fans at Astro. Are you? Cool. Yeah. We actually did a collaboration with them um, on some, if you order their terpene poster, I believe some of the terpene visual visualizations they have done are based on some of our test results. So oh, that's fantastic. I will totally check that out. Oh my God. The, the other two collaborations that you have on your site were really, really great. What was it? Harry's Harvest and Harry's Cool House. Harvest. Yeah. So good. So, yeah. so good. Everybody needs to check those out. They're both incredibly creative. And I, I love that you not only have a dedication to the earth, but a dedication to your community. That's just really admirable. Thank you for that. Okay. So where are we? Let's talk about the difference between cannabis, taking cannabis medicine through smoking or vaping. Does that feel good? Is that a good segue? Yeah. Okay. Go for it. Okay, so I'm going to first back up and just start with inhaling cannabis, so flower, um, which is what it's called. Flower is the actual bud itself. That's what we're referring to when we call it flower. Um, and the difference between flower consumption and all extracted product consumption. Um, one of the benefits that I like from consuming flour, which is traditionally done through a vape or flower vape or a free roll um, or a bomb or there are actually many other ways, <laughs> I shouldn't yep. say that, um, is that you're able to feel the effects almost instantaneously. The effects come on very quickly. And therefore, for me, it puts me under control because I'm able to actually control my dosage. I'm able to take one hit, pause, 
see how I feel. If I want more, I can take another hit. If I'm good, I can stop. And for me, that's super important. Um, I don't like to be surprised. I have a lot of anxiety. I use cannabis for anxiety. The last thing I want is a surprise effect. Mm -hmm. And I have found, and I'm a regular cannabis user, I'm still trying to figure out where my tolerance is with various edibles, various tinctures, capsules. Um, when you metabolize cannabis, it's actually going into your system a different way and it takes a little bit longer and the effects can actually be a little bit different. Um, so for me, my preferred method is consuming flour and that's what we'll talk about. Fantastic. So so I wanted to I wanted to just point out that this is a, a great reason to use the gold leaf journal because you know you 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 might want to stop and make note of that you might want to make note of that gummy that you had was not the best idea right all of those things yeah even if the gummy you know I have tried so many different brands I love the rose delights edibles I love all of Kiva's edibles oh, yeah. um, they're, they're delicious I love them. I have a different effect and a different onset from almost every single one of them. So I agree, the cannabis journal, and same thing with can with flower strains. You have very different effects, um, and it depends on your own personal chemistry. So I think journaling in the cannabis journal, the gold leaf journal, is a fantastic way to start to understand, okay, that Kiva Petra Mint, I'm good with one of them at this time of night, and that gives me the dose I'm looking for. Absolutely. And to add to that, I noticed that I, I'm, I, my, my, I coordinate um, around multiple different things, but one in particular is a woman's menstrual cycle. And so um, I noticed that at different phases in the cycle, as well as clients and friends who are outside of the phase and moving into um, menopause, they have a completely different experience at different phases to different terpenes, to different types of products. Products, uh, vaping, smoking, or, or taking gummies, or you know, a tincture. So I think that that's also a great thing to to be paying attention to as well. Very interesting. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Go so ahead. the two forms I'm going to talk to you about today okay. are rolling joints, and we're going to do a joint rolling tutorial. And then in terms of vaporizing flour, I personally use a Pax two. Um, this is what it looks like. I'll break it all down. I'll show you how to fill it, how to smoke it, all of that jazz. Um, but there are many others. There's the Volcano, which is a larger kind of more tabletop uh, vaporizer. There are all different kinds of flower vaporizers. The key to shopping for one is specifying that you're looking for a flower vaporizer. So when we're talking about a flower vaporizer versus other type of vaping, um, and let's just jump right into it. Go for it. Yes. And I'm going to, I will fill this in a second, but I'll show you. So at the bottom of this pass, there's a little latch and you can press and open up the compartment. I'm pouring it all over my computer. <laughs> and you can see in there that there's ground up flour. The difference between that and a vape pen is that a vape pen, the flower has actually been extracted and there are various methods of extraction, but they're basically extracting the THC, the CBD, and all of those individual cannabinoids um, and other chemical compounds that are giving you the effects. It's then being reintroduced into MC, MC oil, fish, uh, Omega-3 oil, coconut oil, et cetera. I'm actually probably totally listing the wrong things right now. It's okay. MCT it was not, correct. MCT. That works. This is not a product that we produce. Um, great. I got the first one right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but in the vape pen, I don't think that they add any of that stuff, do they? I think it's just, I don't think they're supposed to add any of that stuff. There's actually. definitely a fill with the vape pen. Okay, so I wonder what that is. is okay. that fill. Okay. So, so the difference is you are consuming extracted isolated mm. cannabinoids. Highly concentrated. Highly concentrated. Yeah. So whereas um, you might buy a pre-roll and it says 17% THC, um, when you're getting a vape pen, it might say 86%, but that's super, 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 super concentrated in there. Um, so can, can I ask you to, to um, just for our audience, um, uh, explain pre-roll so that they everybody knows the vernacular that we're using, if you don't mind. Absolutely. Thanks. So a pre-roll, um, a pre-roll is a joint. Um, 
common common term. Um, so a pre-roll is when ground up flour is actually rolled almost like a cigarette into a, a um, smokable form. And you um, buy it that way. You can do it two ways. You okay. can buy a pre-roll. So at a lot of stores, you can buy individual pre-rolls. You can buy packs of pre-rolls. There's a really great product trend going out in the market right now where they're making mini pre-rolls. A lot of brands have them right now. They're great because if you just want, I mean, especially in COVID, if you're smoking alone, you don't want to be smoking a huge pre-roll and then putting it out and having to relight that ash. It smells disgusting. It tastes bad after one use. Um, so there are all these cute little minis coming out um, that are sing sing Single, single use. <laughs> COVID protected pre-roll. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's great. And so in terms, so, so like I said, with both inhaling, with inhaling flour, either through a pre-roll or a vaporizer, you're going to feel the effects almost instantaneously, and that'll help you really control your dosage. Um, one of the differences in terms of the effects is that the, with a pre-roll, if you're smoking straight flour from a pre-roll, it's actually going to be a harder hitting effect up front, and it may peter off a little bit faster. Um, this is my personal experience with pre-rolls and vaping, which I do both of on a regular basis. Um, with vaporizing flour, it's going to feel a little bit more mellow. It's going to feel like it's almost a little bit more in the background, a little bit more manageable, a little bit more social, um, a little bit more just taking the edge off compared to hitting you in the face um, with a big hit of a joint. Yeah. Um, so, you know, for me, in terms of my daily life, and also we'll go into the effects of actually smoking, but in terms of my daily life, I, I try to reach for my packs as much as I possibly can. Um, joints are really relegated more for end of day, same way you might pour yourself a glass of wine or a cocktail. Um, that's kind of the time where I'm looking for a little bit more of that harder hit, hit to the head. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in terms of inhaling, there's obviously a difference between inhaling cigarettes, smoke, and inhaling cannabis smoke from a pre-roll joint. Um, I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to go too far into that, but pre-rolls do not have um, the tar and the nicotine and the other additives added to them. So when you are smoking an all flower pre-roll from a cannabis company, one that is legal and has been tested in the legal market, you can be sure that you are truly just getting pure cannabis flower. Absolutely. One thing you should look out for is these days in Astro Farms, we have a hash infused pre-roll on our menu. Um, a lot of brands are starting to come out with infused pre-rolls and pre-rolls that have other things mixed into them. So there are some brands that are actually making pre-rolls with other botanical herbs mixed into them, um, smoking herbs that are not cannabis. So it makes it a little bit of a lighter blend and you also get the beneficial effects of what uh, those other herbs are. There are also cannabis brands like us who are doing things like infusing them with hash. For me personally, hash is a much mellower effect. So for me, consuming a hash-infused flour pre-roll is much more similar to vaporizing flour than just smoking a straight flour pre-roll. Um, and so it's really good to pay attention, read all the fine details, read the words that are listed on those pre-roll packs. Um, in California, you do legally have to say that it's infused. If it is infused, you have to list the ingredients. So ask your bud buyer, look on the menu, read the ingredients, just to make sure you understand when you're buying a pre-made pre-roll, if it's pure flour or if it's infused, because there will be slightly different effects. Right. Yeah. You see infused, uh, wax infused as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've seen that. So the, the hash does Astor farms, uh, make that hash as well. So we use our own flour. So after we trim, so we trim our flour and then we collect all that trim. Um, and we use a manufacturer right here in Northern California in Santa Rosa, and they turn our, our trim into hash for us. And then they infuse it back into our flour to make our hash pre-rolls for us. Oh, that's fantastic. Hey, yeah. way to, way to use all the parts, right? Exactly. That's the goal. Um, and if you are looking for infused pre-rolls, ice water hash, if you're looking for something clean and sustainable, 
example, is a really great product in terms of having more than just flour. Um, it is basically done, if you imagine, kind of like a washing machine with ice water. You are basically washing and mixing that trim until all the trichomes start to fall off. All those terpenes, you get all that full spectrum benefit, and then it's hardened and turned into kind of a powder. We so Hash is, hash is also very old school. It's one of the more kind of OG, if you use OG in that way, one of the older school kind of uh, products in the cannabis market. Um, so anyway, so back to the differences. When you are smoking a pre-roll, you are still inhaling smoke. Like I said, it doesn't have all of those added chemicals that a cigarette does, but you should still know that you are inhaling smoke. When you are when you are consuming with a vaporizer, you're consuming vapor, which is very different from smoke. Um, so it is significantly healthier for you in terms of just bringing smoke into your lungs. Um, so like I said, I still love my pre-rolls, but I try to reach for my packs as much as I can because it is definitely the healthier option. Absolutely. That's a go-to for many, many people. And although we are not medical professionals, I, I agree with your, I agree with your recommendations. Absolutely. That's fantastic. Okay. So what's next? So the other thing, I'll just kind of talk about my lifestyle personally, just really quickly again. Um, yeah. For me, I'm not somebody who smokes in the house. So after we do this pre-roll um, tutorial, I will not be smoking this right here, uh, but I do feel comfortable vaporizing. Vaporizing does not smell like as much, I should say. It does not smell as much like cannabis. It almost has like a burnt popcorn smell. Um, so it's not as offensive in terms of literally filling your house up with smoke. It's not as offensive in terms of other people smelling the smell. Um, so vaporizing, if you're somebody who is inside and you don't have easy access to go outside and smoke, vaporizing is a great way. So um, my vaporizer is my indoor cannabis consumption and my pre-rolls are my outside cannabis consumption. Fantastic. Of, of flour. Of, of flour. flour. Of flour. There you go. Wonderful. Well, okay, so I'm going to give you guys a tutorial. So um, I'm going to move the camera a little bit. You're not going to see my head anymore, <laughs> but you will see my lap. Okay. Great. There we go. Move my hair. It's a little distracting. All kinds of things over here. <laughs> it's okay. You're good. You're good. Go for okay. it. So we're going to start with grinding. So the first thing you want to do, you're going to have a bud like this. Um, and, and let me back up here. So if you are rolling your own joint, you are most likely going to a dispensary and you're buying a jar of flour. And so in that jar are buds like this. And so that is the full flour. I am going to be rolling up some rainbow chip because that is still my favorite of our strains right now. And where does that lie? Is that a radiant? Is that an evening? What's that? Where's that lie for you? Rainbow chip is outer space. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it would be your favorite too, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get me some of that. Absolutely. Yep. So there are a couple ways that you can grind up your flour. And what you're doing here is basically literally grinding this into small enough pieces just like tobacco in a cigarette so that it can be rolled into that form. Um, and so that the air and the heat is really getting around all of the smallest pieces as opposed to trying to penetrate through the actual dense nug. So there are a couple ways that you can grind. Um, one is actually buying a grinder. I use Sharpstone, they're really great grinders. Um, with a grinder, there are a couple compartments. The top portion, when you open it up, this is where you're going to actually put the large pieces of weed. I'll show you that in a moment. Middle compartment is where you retrieve the ground pieces. And then the best compartment. The best. I was just going to say my favorite compartment. Best compartment. This little thing, you might not even notice that there's another ring at the bottom, but at the bottom of all grinders is the Keef collection. That's right. So in here, and the, a lot of them come with guitar picks to kind of break it up, which I think is very weird, but you know. I, it is, I use, yeah. I use um, lobster picks. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it works Brilliant. really well, yeah. So Keef is basically the powder version of a lot of the trichomes, which is where 
the THC, the cannabinoids are typically found. And so this is kind of like the dried powder form when it's falling off and getting knocked off as you're doing the grinding. Obviously, a lot of that, um, a lot of those cannabinoids and, and trichomes and whatnot are still staying on the ground product that you're going to put into your pre-roll, but you are going to collect a fair amount in here. Um, when you are at the, at a store, a dispensary, and you're purchasing infused pre-rolls, Keef is another form that pre-rolls can be infused with. Nice. Sometimes pre-rolls are also dipped and rolled in Keef so that there's powder on the outside. So all different ways. I like to sprinkle a little bit of Keef into my pre-roll. Yeah. Outside sounds messy. Yeah. Inside, that's where I'd go. Yes. Sure. So if you don't have a grinder, which I'm going to grind this in one second, if you don't have a grinder, you can just break it apart with your fingers. Um, you can also just use a to totally normal scissors and literally just hold it and start kind of snipping up. Um, but because I do have a grinder and it's faster, we're going to do it this way. I would one definitely thing. suggest investing in a, in a, in a chromium or, or some sort of uh, grinder. Just, it just makes it easier for sure. Exactly. Yeah. One of the things you're going to want to look for, and I'll try to get this up close. You can see that big stem in there. So every nug is gonna have a main stem and then it's gonna have some of these smaller stems coming off of the main stem. You don't want those stems in your pre-roll. They will poke through the actual paper, which will cause air to get out and it won't actually pull properly. And it's not the THC, this isn't the good stuff. The, the stems are not the good stuff that you want. So as so you're gonna break apart this nug into smaller pieces, and again, as I broke it into a smaller piece, you can see there, there's still a tiny little piece of a stem. So as you're breaking it up, you are going to pull out as many of those little pieces of stem as you possibly can. I'm gonna grind a fair amount because I'm gonna show you both how to roll a pre-roll and <laughs> how to pack a pack. Fantastic. Hey, do you remember when you had to pull out seeds and stems and all those things? Back you know, in the day. sometimes it still happens. <laughs> I, I remember it was just like seed buds, seed buds. It was, you know, right. Right. Yeah. It's totally different. Sensimia. Yeah. yeah. When for, for everybody who's listening, when a cannabis plant, the flower is from the female plant and it's unfertilized. So when a male plant um, releases its pollen, if that pollen gets on the female plant, it starts to produce seeds. And so instead of the plant spending all of its energy and resources producing THC and cannabinoids, it's now just producing seeds. So you typically get much lower THC product. Um, it's just, it can give you a headache. It's not yeah. Right. yeah. So we put the product in this top compartment and we are now literally grinding it. I always knock it around a little bit try to get the pieces that are stuck off. Now we open the middle compartment and this is what we have. Voila. So that's about the density that you want to grind it down to. Um, you don't want it to be too fine because if it's too fine, it's going to come through the filter. It's going to be too dense. You won't get good airflow, but you don't also want big chunks because again, those are not going to let in airflow and all of those super important things that you need to have um, a pre-roll smoking properly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next up, we need to make our filter. And some people roll pre-rolls without filters. I definitely use a filter. So I use raw, um, a, the raw uh, products. They are unbleached, all natural. So smoking healthy stuff here. They sell pre-roll um, uh Tips, I guess yeah. they call them. I call them a crutch or a filter. Um, they also sometimes sell them. If you get the bigger packs, they'll sometimes have the crutches in there. Right. So I'm going to take one of these out. I like to cut them in half because it's just the size that works for me. Okay. Now I'm going to try to get this really on camera properly. So you're going to fold one end over just a little bit. Let's see. Yep. Yep, yep, there we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Turn it over and fold back on itself the same way. So you're basically making a little accordion at the end. We're going to do it, fold it one more time back. So now we kind of have an M, a little accordion M. There you go. And now we fold it in on itself. So you're going to fold that little M back into itself and keep folding until you folded the M into that entire piece. 
And what is the case for making a um, a filter versus just rolling up a joint with a with a paper? What's the case here? Lots of pros. <laughs> uh, the first is that you're not actually pulling product into your mouth. For me, that kind of ruins the experience when I get a little chunk of weed in my mouth when I'm sure. trying to my joint. Yep. Um, additionally, it also gives you something to hold on to. Mm-hmm. Um, I like to hold on to something that's a little bit stiffer than how the actual joint material ends up being. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you can also smoke it all the way to the end without burning your finger. So right. it makes right. it sturdier. It filters. It stops um, as a filter from the product actually going in your mouth. And you can hold it longer without burning yourself. I.e. So, you no longer need a roach clip. You don't need a roach clip. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So next up, we have our pack of papers. Again, I like to use raw. Um, and one of the most, when you pull out a paper, one of the most, the first things you need to figure out is where the side is that has the glue. So you can see that the top side right here, there's a little line at the top, a little line all the way across the top. It's kind of glistening in the mm-hmm. line a little bit. Yeah, we can see it. But that has the glue on it. Great. I'm right-handed, so this is how I'm going to teach you. Um, I hold it so that the glue is facing me. The glue is on the far side and it's facing me. And the papers will already have a be- the bend in the correct, already have the bend in the correct direction. So, you know, fold it this way, not that way. Right. Okay. So I am going to put my filter at the end. I put it on the left side. I put it halfway in. So half is in and half is sticking out at the end. I do that because at the end, I like to kind of poke it in and it closes up any air gaps. Mm, smart. So I pinch it. So I'm going to hold with my index finger. I hold over that crutch. I'm going to pinch it on top there. Yep. My thumb pinched on the bottom. So I'm going to hold it with my left hand using the crutch to make it sturdy. I have a little spoon that I use for this. Oh, yeah, there you go. I and feel like now, we all have our own little kitchen tools exactly. that we have adapted. Well, yep. you're about to see a, uh, a uh, paper clip in use. in a Hey, so I love it. You. Go ahead, MacGyver. <laughs> so I'm just going to fill my product in here. Um, and you're going to want to kind of spread it out pretty evenly. You don't want to put too much in because you want it to be just only a little bit thicker than the actual filter. You don't need to be making a a mega baseball joint here. Um, I'm gonna put a tiny bit more in. Okay, so this is the part that takes mastery. I am (laughs) still, everybody continues to get better at this if they are a joint roller. Do not get discouraged if you have trouble at first. Um, Just keep trying, it's all about the feel. It's about being gentle and having patience and being steady. So you're gonna take your right hand now and you're gonna almost close the two flaps of paper, let go of your left hand, kind of bring it back. And so now you're pinching the paper with both hands and you're gonna start to roll the paper, the two sides of the paper, back and forth on each other. And what you're doing here is rolling. You'll now see, let me show you the material. You will now see that my material is much more compact Mm -hmm. and it really is truly rolled into the form that I want it to be. Mm -hmm. Don't go too, too crazy here because you don't want it to be really dense or it won't smoke. Now we're gonna keep rolling and let me see if I can get a good angle here. We're going to keep rolling, but we're going to start rolling so that I have to turn this around so that the end over here away from the filter is starting to be on an angle so that the end closest to the filter is angling closer and closer. Right. Can we see that here? See, we've got an angle. So I have more paper actually folded up on the side away from the filter. Mm -hmm. The reason we do that, that makes it into the nice baseball bat shape, which for me is a really nice way to smoke. It gives you enough at the end that you're going to light to really light it properly. um, And it slows everything down as you get further. So next step, use your fingers as clamps. You are going to want to leave enough paper 
beyond the point of where you've rolled your material so that you can clamp it with your fingers. Oh. So you are going to be here. If you can see, I'm clamping it so that the rolled material is on one side of my fingers and the papers, the rest of the paper is on the other side. Okay. Looking good. And you are, as you're clamping it, you are going to start rolling and pinching at the same time. So you're pinching on the inside to make sure that paper starts rolling in on itself. And you're also rolling that product forward. I've never seen the clamp technique. That's fantastic. <laughs> Thanks. Well done. So now we have this. And if you can see it, mm -hmm. we have a tiny little flap still left here. And that's the edge that we saved that has the glue on it. So you're going to lick that edge. And then finally roll it onto itself, smoothing it out so that the actual glue and everything sticks and you have a nice, smooth pre-roll. We are not done yet. <laughs> Next step is to use paper clip, end of a scissors, anything. I've used my sunglasses before. <laughs> <laughs> They're great for on the move. And you're kind of just gonna poke in here and push that product down. You're gonna do it lightly. You don't wanna poke it too hard. And again, this is, you're gonna learn as you roll more and roll more, you'll understand, you'll start to feel how thick that density should be. Yeah. Now I'm gonna grab, so now you can see there's product filled pretty densely in here. And then at the top, there's a tip that's left over of just um, paper material. I'm gonna grab that tip with my fingers and lightly shake it from there. And this is, again, kind of pulling the product down into the cone um, to make it a little bit denser, but again, not too dense. Mm. So now you'll see that paper tip area is just a little bit more than it was a second ago. Second to last step, we're going to grab that tip and we're going to start twisting. You're closing up your pre-roll now. So now you should have a little wick almost off of your pre-roll. And my last step, remember I said that I leave a little bit of this crutch out. I am just going to hold it and push the rest of that crutch in to close up any air bubble, any space that was in here previously. Well done. Thank you. So yeah. that is how to roll a joint. Nice. Nice, nice. Any troubleshooting we need to know about? Like you light it and you can't get you know air through. Obviously that means you did it too dense or uh, any other pieces that you know you come up against pretty commonly that, that we could just troubleshoot now? Absolutely, so, and I'll, I'll bring it up to my face again. Hey, your face, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and then we'll do vaping really fast. So if you can't pull, that might mean that it is too tight. Just kind of roll your fingers over the outside of the joint and just feel for yourself. If it feels rock hard, it's too tight. Mm -hmm. What you can do is kind of pull that crutch out just a little bit and kind of massage the material to spread it out a little bit. That'll loosen it up and give you some more air holes. Great technique. Um, mm -hmm. If you are seeing something called canoeing, which is when you light it and only one side starts to burn and the other side is not burning, that can mean multiple things, but most likely it means that the air in there is just really um, not uh, consistent, that the, the, the uh, density is not consistent. So there are areas where you do have more air and areas where you don't. So um, really it's all about making this as consistent as possible. Fantastic, canoeing, who knew about that problem? Well, <laughs> I mean, we knew about the problem, but I didn't know it was even called that, okay. <laughs> so here is back to the packs. Yes. Um, and I'm just gonna dump it out right in here and you guys are gonna see me with my paperclip instrument. Oh, handy dandy paperclip. It's possible that PAX at this point has created a tool, but I just use an open, a paperclip that I've opened up. Um, and, you know, once you've already consumed the flour in here, it does get a little bit compact. Mm -hmm. So you want to break it up, pour it out. I'll show you in a second what it looks like. Yeah, because a lot of people need to know, like, how do I know when it's done? Well, you know, there's, there's definite clues. Yeah. So this is what the chamber looks like when it's empty. Um, it has a 
metal uh, filter at the bottom, which is removable. There'll be instructions on how to take that in and out and clean it. You want to def- I leave it in typically for a couple weeks. You don't need to clean it or change it that often. Mm. Uh, but you do want to use an instrument like that paper clip that I have to kind of pick off all the last little bits of the older finished product that's in there because those are that the, those are the holes that are going to ventilate for you. So similar, you grind, you grind the product the exact same way that you would be grinding your flour as if you were rolling a pre-roll. But instead, we're just gonna pack this chamber. So I load my ground flour into the chamber. I'm gonna use the other end, similar to how we packed it down in the joint, you're just gonna lightly kind of pack it down into the chamber. I have to do this facing myself. So of course. I can see. Of course. <laughs> And just so anyone knows, that's the PAX, P-A-X, PAX 2. Um, I think the PAX 3 is the one that connects to your phone. <laughs> I don't know if you need all that, but it's pretty fancy. Um, the great thing about uh, vaporizers is that you can also control the temperature at which you are uh, heating up the, um, the flour. So for certain flour, certain terpenes, you know, you might not want to go super hot. Where do you do? I, you, I usually have mine on the middle setting. Where, where do you keep your pack? That's a great question. So I'm going to put the top on and I will pack with you and show you. Um, so once you're actually at the bottom, once you close the chamber up, and it's magnetic, so it just pops right in there. Um, the top is the mouthpiece, and it's also what you turn it on. So you're gonna press in on the mouthpiece, and now it's warming up. Mm-hmm. So when the lights turn green, that means it's warm and ready. Um, you can change, and there are just instructions on this, but if you click it a certain number of times, you can change the heat. Oh, well, I gotta face myself to do that. Uh-huh. So Hold it down for about two seconds and it shows you the different heat levels. So there are four different markers here. Right now I have it on heat three. Okay. I typically start with level two. Um, So that's what I'm gonna start with right now. Mm -hmm. The reason I do that is I like to really taste and experience the terpenes before they start to burn off. Yeah. Um, So if you start on a lower heat setting, you're gonna really release those terpenes. It's gonna be a beautiful flavor. Um, so just waiting for this to heat up for our terpene. There we and go. And there's your green. And they describe it as taking a sip. So you're just going to put it to your mouthpiece and just sip in. And you no longer need to hold it like we used to be told, right? No, no longer need to do that. Um, you do want to breathe it all the way in, but I'm not sure if you could see any vapor coming yeah, a little through. bit. But so um, you can see something. It's not smoke. It's vapor. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm probably going to cough in a second. (laughs) It does still make you cough a little bit because you are still bringing something into your lungs. So I typically, if I'm having a longer session, I'll probably have a few hits or a few sips on level two. Then I go and I mix it up. A lot of people don't do this. I think this is super important. Um, When you go back in and you open up the chamber again, you can see if you mix it around, and it's gonna be hard to tell on here, that some of the material is still mm-hmm. green and some of it's starting to turn brown. Right. When it's turning brown, what's happening is it's decarbing, it's decarboxylating. And that means that it's heating up to a temperature that the THC and the other cannabinoids are releasing into the vapor. But not burning. But not burning. Right. At the same time, it is cooking the cannabis because it is heat. And so it is going to turn a darker brown color and darker and darker as you continue to go on. So I, after I pick, taken a few hits on level two, I fluff it around, mix it around. Um, I tend to see that the product on the bottom closer to the filter gets darker first. Sure. So I fluff it, put the top on, go back to level two. And then once I can taste that the terpenes have pretty much worn off in terms of their amazing profile, mm-hmm. and you just start to taste more cannabis, that's when I bring it up to level three um, for the remainder of my experience. Fantastic. And I, I love, oh, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to try to figure out how to show you what when it's done, you'll really taste when it's done. You'll be able to taste the difference between level two with the terpenes and when it's finished. Um, But what you're looking for is a consistent dark brown, not black, but a dark brown. And it tends to become a little bit more ground up. So you have finer, small pieces of dark brown material. 
Right. And so that, you, you know, you'll also notice that you'll no longer get the vape kind of exhalation, right? right. And it'll absolutely, the taste will change. Um, I did love that PAX came out with a different size oven cover so that you don't have to fill the entire oven. I thought that that was ingenious because I always was doing, it was like, you know, the joint is too big. You need the tiny right. one. I thought exactly. the same, it was, it was the same kind of idea. I thought it was great. So that's it. That's how to, that's at least how to vaporize with a PAX2 vaporizer and how to roll a pre-roll. From Cannabis Flower from Aster Farms. Fantastic. Wonderful. Okay. So uh, let's choose our winner from our giveaway. Give me a second here. You drink some water. La, 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 la. Okay. Okay. Our lucky winner of the Gold Leaf Journal will be Dana S. Dana, you will receive an email from me tomorrow uh, requesting um, a whole bunch of information so we can get that out to you. Congratulations. Oh, anything else you'd like to add? Any pieces? That was fantastic. I loved every single moment of it. That's it. You know, um, it's there are no stupid questions in cannabis. Definitely ask your friends questions, ask the internet questions, ask your, your bud tender and dispensary employees questions, um, ask Elementa questions. Ask and Aster if Farm. you have questions for us, you can find us at asterfarms.com. You can email us from our website or you can DM us on Instagram at asterfarms. Gorgeous. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your entire experience and walking us through how to smoke and vape cannabis flowers straight from Master Farm, straight from the sunshine. It's beautiful and lovely to have you. Well, uh, let's see. Uh, la, la, la. Okay, sorry. In the chat. Um, we have a, let's see, looks like we have a moment here. If anybody has any questions that they want to put in the chat, uh, for Julia, or um, if they have questions for you, is there a specific place that you want them to go to? Is there a specific? The best, the best place to reach us is DMing us on Instagram at okay. Ask Farms, um, or going to our website. There's a contact form, and it goes to me and my husband, so you'll be sure that you get an answer <laughs> from the owners of the company. Wonderful. Fantastic. Thank you so much. We really appreciated having you walking us through all this great information. Um, ladies, uh, please go check out Aster Farms. Oh, wait, we have a question here. Thoughts on smoking from a pipe. Okay, real quick uh, from Veda. So I would say smoking from a pipe, you have some benefits. So you're not burning and inhaling the actual paper of a pre -roll. Mm -hmm. um, so that is positive. Um, in terms of inhaling the smoke, it's the same as a pre-roll in that it's not vapor. It is still smoke. Um, but again, you don't have to know how to roll a pre-roll. So that's better. Um, and you're not actually burning and inhaling the paper itself. So um, like I said, luckily, because of cannabis testing, the actual paper that your pre-rolls are rolled in, they actually have to go through the testing process too. Okay. Um, so that you can be sure, at least in California, if you're buying in the legal market, you, the paper that you are smoking is clean um, in every regard. But smoking from a pipe definitely does eliminate that. Wonderful. Okay. Any other questions, ladies? That's a good one. Okay. Don't see any coming up. Well, this was fantastic. I thank you for your time and your expertise and your flair. And I especially like the, the shaking piece. I was like, oh, yeah, you do got to shake, don't you? <laughs> you got to shake. <laughs> That was great. Uh, it, it seems like you 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 could get a job as a, a roller if you if you ever needed to. But um, uh, wonderful, and thank you for sharing all of Aster Farms pieces and history and and all that you are and your wonderful work in the world. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for having us, and thanks okay. for for attending. Absolutely. Okay. Take care. Thanks, everyone.